Hello, my dear audience. Today we're gonna visit the Lost House by Frank Lloyd Wright. It was designed in the year he died, in 1959, and it was completed posthumously in 1968. Entirely made of concrete blocks in the same color as the desert, the house perfectly blends in with the surrounding landscape, and it looks organic and futuristic at the same time. It's unbelievable that this house was designed more than six years ago by a 91-year-old architect. In the middle of Phoenix, Arizona, is a group of mountains called the Phoenix Mountain Preserve. Against the side of one of these mountains is a dead-end street, which is isolated from the rest of the city. This street climbs up the mountain and the house is located almost at the end, at the highest point. From above, the unusual shape makes the house instantly recognizable. And from the street, the house is completely visible when driving by. We go through the entry gate and walk over the driveway. Before we enter the house, we first gonna take a look at the floor plan. As is the case in most houses by Wright, the shape of the nature dictates the shape of the architecture, and therefore the curving lines of the mountain ridge dictate the shape of the house. By creating an elongated layout, each room faces the landscape and has access to natural sunlight. Wright was fascinated by geometry and therefore he drew a floor plan that entirely consists of circles that were intersecting and interacting with each other. Some parts of the house form a full circle while other parts only form a small piece of a larger circle that extends beyond the floor plan. The unique shape and combination with overall access to sunlight give the home its nickname the circular sun house. We color the different living spaces that are inside and we name the function of the individual rooms. We decorate the drawing with furniture to give an indication of the size and dimensions. Let's now take a look inside. We start to walk around the courtyard that is hidden behind high walls that create privacy and provide protection against the strong winds of the desert. Through circular openings you can still look into the pool area, yet the holes are small enough to maintain the enclosed character of the courtyard. You can park your car underneath a carport and walk under a porch without being tormented by the burning desert sun. The porch is supported by the outer walls of the terrace from one side and steel pillars on the other side. The carport is an extension of the porch and it is supported at the end by a concrete tower that also functions as a tool shed. Underneath the porch we continue to walk and we step through the front door. Once inside, we walk a little further and we see the open living room at the right side of the front door, with the kitchen in the middle. The living room is amazing, with its large open space that is filled with sunlight. Because the walls, ceiling and the tiles of the floor are in the same color as the desert, it echoes the feeling of the landscape outside. The curving panoramic windows provide an unlimited view into the valley and work like a cinema screen with the changing colors of the sky and the mountains as a movie that is constantly playing. In the middle is the sitting area 
and behind it is a large curving couch that follows the placing of the windows. The roof cantilevers over the edge of the windows. Over the entire length of the house, the roof extends beyond the external walls. This creates a shadow that falls over the windows, which reduces the temperature of the burning sunlight. Because of the curving layout, you can see the other side of the house through the windows of the living room. Extra light is brought in from above through a clerestory that is created by lifting the middle part of the roof above the outer roof part, creating a ceiling that consists of two circles. The roof partly enters the living space underneath the clerestory and forms an overhanging lowered ceiling at the inside. Frank Lloyd Wright not only designed the house, but also the furniture. This makes it a complete artwork. It is like walking around in his imagination. At the center of the living room is a fireplace, and with its cylindrical shape and truncated cone, this fireplace is reminiscent of another design by Frank Lloyd Wright. The Guggenheim Museum. This similarity is no coincidence. Both structures were designed around the same time. During this latest part of his career, the designs by Frank Lloyd Wright became increasingly more geometric and futuristic. Next to the fireplace are two glass doors. From here we step outside. The terrace has the same tiles as the living room, allowing a smooth transition from inside to outside. The cactuses, placed in front of the courtyard walls, make the terrace look like a continuation of the landscape, with the swimming pool almost like an oasis in the desert. Seen from here, the house with its sand-colored tower and courtyard walls has a visual resemblance to a pueblo. Pueblos are mud settlements built by Native Americans in the southwest of the United States. The Norman Likes House is not the only example of pre-Columbian influence on the work of Frank Lloyd Wright. Some of his early designs were based on a Maya architecture. Here is a small open space and when you walk over this pathway, you arrive at an entry gate which is placed next to the front door. This gate makes it possible to walk from the porch straight into the courtyard. This is the pool maintenance house and next to it is a stair that leads downwards to the basement which is used for storage and laundry facilities. This cellar is also accessible from a spiral staircase and when we climb up this stair we are back inside. Next to the pantry and the kitchen. Frank Lloyd Wright saw kitchens as workspaces and therefore in order to be practical everything had to be within fingertip access. This explains why all his designed kitchens are very small compared to the large size of most of his houses, especially small for today's standards. Very interesting is that this kitchen is entirely circular. In the middle is a mobile butcher block, which is placed on wheels. The kitchen is sunlit by small, half-circular windows. We leave the kitchen, walk around the fireplace, and now we return to the spiral stair, and we go up to the only room which is on the second floor level, the office. Only accessible through the spiral staircase, the office feels a bit like a tower room in a medieval castle. All the furniture and cabinets in the office are custom made for the house to fit the circular space. Even the desk forms half a part of a circle. 
The office is sunlit from above by a skylight and a series of windows placed at the eye level of a sitting person. These windows have the same shape as the kitchen below, but then placed in the opposite direction. We return downstairs and walk around the piano. Frank Lloyd Wright, who was an avid piano player himself, believed that every house needed a piano to bring culture in the living space. That's why he included the piano in most of his designs. Behind the piano is a small library or study area placed in an alcove. It has a desk and bookcases and it also contains the wet bar. We leave the living space and go to a room that is on the other side of the foyer. This is the den or the media room, an enclosed space with a more private character that is used for watching television and intimate moments. The other side of this window is next to the front door. The small windows in the back still provide a view towards the desert. Now we go to the wing that holds the bedrooms. Frank Lloyd Wright wanted that each bedroom would face the valley and therefore all the bedrooms are placed next to each other and connected by a long corridor at the back side. This corridor has also a storage function with cabinets over the entire length at the right side. The lines of the many closets create an interesting curving perspective, forming some kind of rhythm or pattern when you walk down the hallway. We first gonna take a look at the smallest bedroom. We go a little bit further down the hallway and at the left we see an opening that leads to a small bathroom and the second bathroom. The bathrooms in this house are relatively small, but like the kitchen, Wright considered them workspaces and not luxury rooms. Therefore they had to be compact, with everything within reach. We leave the second bedroom and walk further towards the master bedroom. The corridor is sunlit by windows in the rear and skylights at the ceiling. Here you see the skylights from above. The narrow corridor with its low ceiling feels claustrophobic, but this was done intentionally. One of Wright's trademarks is suppression followed up by expansion, building up tension by walking through a narrow space and then getting a climactic feeling by stepping into a large space that breaks open into the wideness of the landscape. Frank Lloyd Wright wanted that every part of the house felt curving and therefore the house has no sharp corners. By placing a half circular table at the corner of an internal wall, even the transition from the bathroom into the bathroom feels like a fluent curving movement. The shower cabin has a skylight, so you can shower in broad daylight. While lying in bed, you can watch a sunset or a sunrise over the desert and the mountains in the distance. By opening two glass doors, 
you can step on a small triangular balcony that is completely cantilevering. From here you can have a 180 degree view over the rough desert landscape with downtown Phoenix in the background. Built out of concrete and with round shapes and placed on a hillside, the Norman Likes House is very similar to the many futuristic designs by John Lautner. And this similarity is just what makes it one of my favorite houses by right. I think it is a beautiful end to the career of one of the greatest architects of all time. This was your tour guidance. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.